I can't imagine their consciences. They're out wherever they are around the country, and we're here trying to get something done. Tonight on RFL, with just days before the country going over that fiscal cliff, still no deal in sight, not even close. We're going to tell you how the latest game of fiscal chicken in D.C. could hit you in your wallet. Then, a local paper's decision to publish the addresses of every gun owner in their region has ignited a national firestorm. We're going to show you how the controversy has literally gone well beyond Westchester and Rockland County coast to coast instead, and then we'll give you at home a chance to sound off. Did the Journal News have the right here or do the right thing in making the personal info of gun owners public? Or did the paper go a step too far in the wake of the Newtown massacre? Your chance to speak out is coming up both online and on our phone lines. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to RFL. I'm Richard French, and thanks so much for joining us this Thursday evening, December 27th. My gosh, we're almost there at the end of the year. And they're now just five, count them, five days till Washington gridlock sends the country over a fiscal cliff. And for everybody who says, and I was one of them, uh, it's just a lot of uh, analogies or a clever soundbite. You're going to see in a little bit, there's real consequences come January 1. Not all at once here, for some though, maybe all at once, but there are going to be consequences that we are going to feel in real ways. Now, any hope for that last minute deal, it's going to require the leaders of both parties to actually start talking to each other, not at each other. And while frustration in D.C. may be causing many Americans to just tune out, trust me when I tell you the stakes are very real. Failure to reach a deal could stamp out the beginnings of what most believe is an economic recovery. And already you're hearing people use words like recession here and not just, you know, bang at the moon. For more on what went down or didn't go down in D.C. today, including a very angry Harry Reid, as you saw, let's bring in our senior political correspondent, Andrew Whitman. And uh, it was one of those moments, and we know it because we work in the business, but you time a speech just right in a slow news day, all of a sudden, uh, people turn the cameras on you, and for 10 plus minutes on the 24 hour national network news, Harry Reid had the floor and he went off. But in terms of what actually happened in progress towards averting the fiscal cliff, Rich, Not if we so. focused on that, <laughs> it would be a very short piece. President Obama was back in D.C. today, but despite a whole lot of complaining from one party about the other, not a whole lot got done. And to make matters worse, the earliest that the House could show up from vacation is now Sunday night. It may already be too late. Five days before the fiscal cliff and with the House of Representatives out of town until Sunday, Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid admitted a deal seems unlikely. I have to say, be very honest, Mr. President. I don't know time-wise how it can happen now. In a scathing attack, Reid called House Speaker John Boehner a dictator and pointed blame on him for letting members stay home with no deal in sight. We are here in Washington working while the members of the House of Representatives are out uh, watching movies and watching the kids play soccer and basketball. John Boehner seems to care more about keeping his speakership than about keeping the nation on firm financial footing. The Republican leader in the Senate responded, saying it's Democrats who have failed to lead. Make no mistake, the only reason Democrats have been trying to deflect attention onto me and my colleagues over the past few weeks is that they don't have a plan of their own. President Obama returned to Washington today for a last minute push. Before leaving vacation in Hawaii, he had separate phone conversations with congressional leaders, but it's not clear those talks helped. Hopefully there's still time for an agreement of some kind. Washington's failure to avoid the cliff threatens to undermine the fragile U.S. economic recovery as Americans face big tax hikes on New Year's Day. Adding to the mess, the Treasury Department is now warning that the government will soon be unable to pay its bills. Republican leaders in the House say they'll take action on whatever bill the Senate can pass, but they say the Senate has to act first. And so, Rich, you could boil this all down to an equivalent of, let's say, a couple of kindergartners fighting over a toy. That seemed like it was about the action that was happening in Capitol Hill today. Yeah, and uh, we're going to talk about a second what it's going to mean for everybody, because uh, trust me, I don't care if you got uh, a few zeros attached to your annual paycheck here or seven or eight. Everybody's going to take a hit. I want to bring in our table first, though. Um, and uh, uh, Dominic Carter, of course, here joins us, political journalist and author, Basil Smeichel, former top aide to Hillary Clinton and a professor at Columbia right now. And as you know, Andrew Whitman. All right, let me just rattle off a few other things. And this isn't the total list that happens January 1 or begins to happen January 1. First of all, 
everybody's taxes. I'm not just talking plus million dollars and up. Everybody's taxes go up January 1. Uh, Two million people all of a sudden right away will not get their unemployment benefits and another million about a month or two after that. So about three million people in short order wouldn't get unemployment benefits extended here. Uh, payroll tax cut, everybody, um, I think most of us, whether you know or not, you get about a thousand bucks off your bill every year, that goes away. Child tax credits, that's 25 million Americans will lose about a grand a year and about another eight million would either fall under the, uh, below that five, poverty line or fall even deeper underneath it. Now, if you pay the AMT, or if you're in the middle class here, you're talking for a family that makes about 75 grand a year, that their bill would go up 3,700 bucks. That's the AMT, the alternative minimum tax here. So those things, and then even little things like gallon of milk, um, it's gonna go up double January 1 because all the farm programs aren't being renewed. And if you have any skin in the game as it relates to Wall Street, um, uh, they're already talking about big sell-offs come January 1 because Wall Street doesn't go off of economic indicators. They go off of momentum here and fear. And then secondarily, all of a sudden you have economists saying all these good tidings about maybe an economic recovery. We could be talking about a recession in Basel for the life of me. Um, people are going to look back and say why. We all know how this is going to end. Whatever leverage the Republicans have ends 1231. They're going to have to capitulate. Even the Speaker knows this. But yet we're going through this like self-imposed painful dance. And again, for what? Well, I, I don't, actually, I would, I, would, I would disagree slightly with the premise. I don't think they believe they have to capitulate. I think, um, you know, if, if the fact that Boehner can't lead his own party is an indication, it shows that they are fairly entrenched. Um, you have to remember, moderate Republicans are scared of the Tea Party, so they're not going to relent anytime soon, even though Norquist has said, you know, that he's sort of not going to put too much pressure on. The Tea Party is still there, still very active, and still is driving a lot of this. Okay, but to the Tea Party, your point, Andrew, um, there's a date here that people are going to hear a lot of in the next few, which is January 3rd. That's when the vote comes up here for the House Speakership. Most people believe if nothing happens between now and then, John Boehner will overwhelmingly get support here to keep his speakership. Many people believe if he does anything between now and January 3rd, it could jeopardize it if he's going to be seen as the guy raising taxes in the Republican caucus. But once January 3rd happens, then we all know how the silly dance will work. He'll then go along, get 50 Republicans to peel off here, the ones with safer seats, and most people believe it'll get passed. Um, it seems, again, this is... Not that I'm naive, politics always drive everything in Washington, but this is a classic one where this was all done to ourselves. We set these deadlines, we put these sequestration in place here to force everybody to be adults. Nobody thought we'd get to this point, and now we're actually going to do it to ourselves, and again, for what? Well, and, and as you mentioned, all of this is a sort of artificial construct. This was all pressure that Congress put on itself because they couldn't reach deals last year or earlier in this year. So. January 1st is the deadline for the fiscal cliff, and then there's another deadline of January 3rd for the speaker's vote. But let's say John Boehner does get reelected. That's good for John Boehner, but I'm not necessarily sure it gives him the power to wield right. enough Republican votes to get something passed. And you've talked about leverage, and you've talked about impetus on the Republicans to, to get it done. I'm not sure they're in a much graver position well, politically on January 4th as they are on January 1st. This is why 1st. I disagree. After the election, Dominic, the American public was polled on a bunch of things, but one of them was how do you feel about the Tea Party? One in five Americans support the Tea Party. Now, the Tea Party has gone on record as saying, by and large, they don't believe in global warming. Okay, forget about what happened with Hurricane Sandy. They don't believe in any form of gun control. They want the, the government out of this as well. They don't even believe, um, as Boehner learned the hard way, that there should even be tax, a tax hike on millionaires at the expense of the other 98% of Americans, or 99%. My point is, they don't actually have this real power that the GOP is afraid of. When do you think, and we had a Republican guest that did Joe tonight, but when do you think that we're going to finally see the GOP saying, my God, we're going to lose every election going forward if we cater to 40 guys in the House? I mean, we may not appreciate it, but, and I think Basil touched on this to begin with, January 3rd. I mean, rule number one, if you're a politician, self-survival. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And so Speaker Boehner, the first thing he has to do is to retain his speakership. Once he's able to do that, then he can deal with 
and and some would call. I used this term last night. I I know the members of Congress, but some of these some of these folks are nutty, and he can deal in terms of their positions, and that's just not because they disagree with me, some of their position, positions are so far on the fringe that a moderate would look at them and go, oh my God, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. so Boehner has to uh, retain his speakership. Then we'll see things happen. And, and again, this all comes down to, it's all a game, and it's a game at the expense tax hike of then, right, right at the American people. Right. That's Let's all this is right now. That's all that's right. going on. And it's, somebody said it today, Congressional, the White House, in fact, the, the, out of the White House, there was a comment that came out that's congressional stupidity. And I really think, as simple or oversimplistic as it is, that's exactly what it is. And this is why people hate politics and they hate Washington's crap like this. All right, we're going to take a break here. When we come back, a newspaper in our region made headlines around the country. We're going to have much more on the online outrage over the gun owner map to put the journal news in the spotlight and then we turn the floor over to you at home here it's burning up message boards in the paper's website and we've got a ton of reaction of our own today to the question was the journal news in the right to publish the address of every gun owner in new york's hudson valley or was it a gross violation of privacy stay with us your reaction much more after this <laughs> 